Hey guys, Jeremy here. Thank you all for watching the top five worst episodes of Supernatural Season 1. Again, worst is just the clickbait title, to be honest. If I chose the title that I would have wanted, it would have been something like 30 pages long. This, however, is a completely correct title. These are the five best episodes of Season 1. This is both my personal opinion as well as just critical acclaim for these episodes. Some of them are probably going to be pretty spot on, but the others are going to be a bit maybe surprising, especially maybe my first one. Let's get into it. So for lists like these, there are sometimes honorable mentions, and in fact there are two for this season. First being Shadow. This is one of those episodes where they actually full-on use the city of Vancouver. There's even street signs that are completely just out there. Like, they don't bother to hide them at all. One of the episodes that actually made the streets seem scary... It's odd to say that now, but really, in terms of how the show's been shot, they can't do this anymore. They haven't done it like this in eons. They actually set up these shadow creatures really, really cool. I swear they've been in my nightmares before. I thought this episode had some fantastic twists. I love it when they found out that Meg couldn't be killed from, like, a fall. They figured out that she was actually, in fact, a demon. The fact that they met their dad and they almost got killed. It's a great episode and it holds you on the edge of your seat right up until the end. And the other honorable mention is something Wicked. This is an episode that really delved into the brothers' history, more about them as siblings growing up with the life that they had. This is probably the best episode of the season about their past. We find out that they're going after a ghoul that Dean had failed to protect his brother from almost. This not only is a redemption for Dean, but also a better connection for the brothers, and it almost was in my top five because I love this episode so much. But now let's get on to the numbers. Let's get on to number five, the episode that introduced humor truly to the show. Hell House. Not only did this episode introduce us to Ghost Facers, those annoying guys who I can't still believe that they were introduced in the first season and they have come back intermediately to the point where I think the last time they were in the show was season 10 or 11. I, they haven't been seen for a while and I'm kind of surprised that they haven't come up in season 15 yet. But this episode really showed the humor that was possible with Supernatural Element. Not just the show, but the idea of horror and humor mixing together. They were able to prove that. They were able to show that it could be done. And it turned out to be one of the key moments, one of the key points of Supernatural as the show would further progress. And it stands not more so as an episode in terms of its story, but really in terms of what it brought to the show. Without this episode, we wouldn't have the humor elements that we have in the show now. In short, Hell House set up the idea of humor in this show. Tall Tales is the one that full on took it to the level that it needed to go to prove that this show could have humor and supernatural scary elements. Number four is Scarecrow. Not only is this one of my favorite episodes because of where it was shot, which is really quite close to where I live, this is an episode that uses an urban legend, sort of an old folk tale, and puts its own little spin on it. I believe Kim Manners directed this episode and there's a lot of great visual imagery in this episode. Just before the title card appears where we see the couple being attacked and there's that slow pan down on the scarecrow mast with no scarecrow there, just a string like flowing in the wind. Super good shot. This episode has some really funny humor in it. It's got one of Dean's best lines ever from the entire show in it. And while it was a monster of the week, it also had a story building. We learned more about the conflict between Sam and Dean. Sam almost goes off on his own, but he realizes that his relationship with his brother is what's gotten him this far, and he needs to go and help his brother. That connection, those moments like these are so few and far between in the show now that it's so welcome to see these moments as well it was also the introduction to Meg and that little twist that happens at the end with her was a great little ending and it really brought more intrigue and more sort of ooh moments to this first season because while the first season is pretty decent there are some moments where the episodes just mean nothing there's nothing really to do with forward narrative building and that's why episodes like this one were so great to have considering there are a few episodes of this season that you could really skip that's something else I should mention all seven of these episodes, the five and the two honorable mentions, these are ones that you definitely need to see, if I, in my opinion. There are obviously a few more that I would say that you should watch a season one, but in honesty, you don't have to watch all of season one to get the gist of this season. At least to say, these are definitely the core ones. And being a core episode, number three on this list is the episode that gave us the tagline that has been said 
forever. Wendigo, saving people, hunting things, the family business. I remember when Crowley made a joke about this in, what, season seven or season eight? I remember he just used it back on them so well. And to be honest, this line has been used to death. What's funny enough though is it basically summarizes the show. This was the second episode of the season, and while Lady in White did kind of set up the aspects of what the show was going to be, Wendigo nailed down what the original core elements of this show were, which was fighting monsters and scaring the pants off of you. The introduction with the Wendigo carving through those guys in their tents was super scary. It was also super scary to see those outdated phones. And the brothers go on the hunt with the sister and I think another brother or something and the park ranger. Park ranger gets full on right up into the trees. So good. Reminded me a little bit of Predator almost. And it takes the Wendigo legend. Sure, no horns. It makes it terrifying. And then when he has to shoot it all Alan Wake style with a flare gun to kill it, such a great shot. It's one of the scariest episodes in the season in my opinion because as much as I love the idea of the outdoors camping and whatnot, if I wake up in the middle of the night and it's complete pitch blackout and I hear anything, I'm gonna start waking out. And this episode took full advantage of those fears that I have. And when I was starting to watch the first season for the first time, I knew that this episode was a key episode because it has everything that you need. It has the brothers hunting a monster, it has absolutely terrifying imagery, and it has a fantastic payoff. And that's why Wendigo is number three. Now coming into number two, this is one of the best season finales of the entire show, Devil's Trap. It keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire way through. We have a fantastic triple threat going on with Meg, Yellow Eyes, and their father, actually. The brothers are trying to save their dad, but at the same time, they're also trying to hunt down Yellow Eyes. There's this constant tug and pull of what they've got to do, who they've got to fight, who can they use the gun on, the gun being the biggest element. They've got two bullets left, and man, I just started playing The Last of Us for the first time, so the idea of just having two bullets and holding on to those two bullets for the utmost completely necessary reason is so, so vivid in my mind. We got introduced to the whole idea of a devil's trap. Meg unfortunately died, which was a sad but necessary scene. It shows that while sure they are taking down a demon, depending on how quickly they've saved the person, sometimes they can't even save the person that it was inhabiting. And that just adds more guilt onto going after Yellow Eyes. And then when Yellow Eyes takes over their dad and there's that super duper showdown in the shack, Dean almost dies from just getting ripped apart. Sam is able to break free of the hold and then shoot his dad in the leg. John's on the floor he's like, you gotta shoot me, son! And your leg's like, no, don't do it! And you almost want him to go like Keanu Reeves from Point Break and be like, no! But obviously you can't do that. But then they see Yellow Eyes get away and then it ends with them getting slammed by the semi-truck. What a great, great way to hold your audience's attention for season two. What a goddamn fantastic cliffhanger. So freaking good. Also, great addition of Bad Moon Rising. One of the best music selection moments of the entire show. And so that's why Devil's Trap is number two. So you might be kind of wondering now what I think number one should be. And it's an episode that I actually don't even remember liking as much when I first watched it. However, the horror, use of the urban legend, the use of the background sort of building of mystery with Sam, his relationship with Yellow Eyes, his relationship with his brother, and the whole mystery angle of the show that would continue all the way until season five is Bloody Mary. I love this episode. This is my number one pick because it perfectly illustrates the horror of this season. It has a fantastic ending that is so well shot. Love the final confrontation and using that shot of Dean hitting the mirror just as a great, great shot. The whole mystery of Sam fighting with himself. We see him hating himself. He's feeling guilt over a mystery of something to do with Jess. The episode also ends with Sam seeing Jess in kind of like a flash look. And while elements like this were never used really again in the show, I applaud it because the shot kind of reminds me of old 80s, 90s movies and TV shows about crime and mystery and kind of the unknown. It helps illustrate more guilt, more mystery, and more intrigue in the character of Sam Winchester. 
sister. And it shows that the boys just aren't going after Yellow Eyes and their father for revenge, but they're going after it to figure out what's really going on with Sam. And as I said, that little nugget, this little tidbit would blow up and become so much more in the show as it would later go on. But also the use of the urban legend. I'm kind of surprised considering how close they stick to the actual urban legend, but yet how terrifying they can make Bloody Mary. Because it's been parodied to death, right? Yet they were able to make the entity of Bloody Mary be horrifying because it wasn't just some girl, it was someone that was related to them. It was someone that was related to the victims and had a history with them. And it had a history that related to the urban legend that made you almost sympathize with this thing as it was chopping people's eyeballs out. I love this episode so much that if I were to say any episode to watch of season one, while I would say for narrative purposes, I would say you should watch Devil's Trap because actually that was the first episode I ever watched of the show, but I can't deny that Bloody Mary is the best episode put together of the entire season. And it's possibly one of the best episodes of the show in its history. That is why I'm gonna put Bloody Mary as my number one pick for season one. Thank you so much for watching this video. As you can see, I'm back here, so now I'll be doing supernatural stuff with the wall again. I'm gonna be working on my top five worst and top five best episodes of season two soon, as well as reviewing season three, so get ready for that. But I wanna hear what you guys have to say. What do you guys think are the five best episodes of season one? There's a few to choose from, so I'm quite interested to see what you guys have to say. I'm pretty certain that Devil's Trap is going to be on almost everyone's list, but I'm interested to see what you guys have to say nonetheless. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys soon.